Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Dateline Downtown Podcast. This is Ted Shaw, your co-host. I'm here with Juan Hernandez, my hook, my co-host, and we're just recapping our semester of recording podcasts for the University of Houston downtown. That's correct, Ted. This is the recap show for recap episode for 2014 for the podcast. I mean, we've gotten a tremendous amount of response. I, you know. Let's let's Ted, let's go back to how how we started the po- how we initially started the podcast. I mean, we were hired as editors for Dateline Downtown back in I believe during the summer in May. In May. And you know, originally like you stated before in previous episodes, you know, this was an idea that I originally had. Mm-hmm. But I really wanted I really want to incor- really wanted to incorporate you on the idea as well. You know, so we can work on this as a team and bring start bringing in guests to talk about. You know, we can talk talk about UHD, talk about what's going on in the news, um, just about everything and anything in between, as we stated in our intros when we first started. Yeah, we Juan came up with this good idea to incorporate a podcast with our online sites and to accompany our print editions. So we invested in the initial equipment. We each bought microphones and we bought a mixer and we just started recording one day. Uh, Our first episode was just Juan and I kind of experimenting and we started talking about ISIS, which was uh, really taking off at that point. And uh, we, we recorded a good episode. It was kind of you know our first experiment with it oh yeah yeah um obviously you're gonna hear a lot of technical difficulties even to this day we're still learning how to how to i guess speak into the mic you know the mics we have mics right now you really have to speak into them because you're only going to get like a direct feed to it so but yeah we were talking about the whole isis situation it was just a matter of 10 minutes and we got i mean we got decent hits as far as the first episode goes for you know, for something new for Dayline Downtown. I mean, I've never, there's never been anything like this before in the past. And hopefully we can start incorporating video in the near future. But our first episode, I mean, you can go back and listen to it. It might be a little dated, but you can obviously hear the the progress we've made. And we started, initially this went up on, on SoundCloud. We had our own, we had the links and on our official website and we got tremendous i want to say tremendous but you know we got a decent amount of hits and we went we moved forward with with our podcast with our second episode which was our, our second episode was kind of sprung upon us it was a gift i would say yeah a last we, minute addition too yeah we we got an email about two days before asking if we would like to interview uh, a member of the Defense Department, a high-ranking member and author of the book, The Silent War, uh, America's 30-Year Conflict with Iran, David Christ. And he came down to the office uh, expecting a print interview, and we were able to get him on podcasts. And it was, it was really incredible. Uh, that podcast got a lot of attention. Those first two episodes, I think, got us uh, 60 or 70 hits combined. And when we first started out, we thought that uh, we may not get any hits. You know, mm-hmm. nobody may listen. Right. It was it was a matter of just, I guess, trial and error. You know, yeah. we either, either we were either going to succeed and keep building on that su- success or we were going to fail. But if if we did fail, I mean, it didn't mean that we were just going to give up. We were just going to keep building on, you know, we look at things that we fail on and we know we we try to do better on that. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't say this podcast is perfect, but, you know, we're perfecting it as, as we go along. And David Christ, I mean, you know, he has a really good book out. What was the yeah. book called? The, the Twilight, Twilight War? War. About the was it the U.S. U- America's thirty year thirty year secret proxy war with Iran. With Iran, it's uh, I know you got a chance to read a couple of excerpts from it. 
Yes. And uh, as did I, it's a pretty interesting book. Um, and we followed up that episode with an interview with student government body president John Locke here at UHD. We try to incorporate interviews with Locke as often as we can because he's obviously an important figure among the student community, uh, and he's made significant uh, changes to the student experience here at UHD. Uh, I feel like Locke has uh, really stuck up for, for students and diversity of students, uh, fighting for food options to make this campus more uh, diversity uh, friendly since it's so diverse. Uh, mm -hmm. They're bringing, they're negotiating a new food contract with our food supplier to bring in uh, ethnic foods, healthy foods. Uh, so that's mainly what the third edition was about. And it was also about warming up for the big push for Walk to Vote, uh, which was a huge affair. Episode four was really the one that, the, the episode that put us right on the map. It and, certainly was. And we received the national, national attention from it, which... Were they radio stations that we got picked up on, or on, were they, they were, online? Or They were a combination of both. Uh, two FM syndicated radio stations picked up this podcast somehow. Uh, one of them is Democracy Now!, hosted by Amy Goodman, uh, a radio station that I listen to a lot, based in Austin, but she has a worldwide following. Mm -hmm. Um and it was also picked up by Progressive Voices, which is another um, uh, humanitarian kind of group, democracy-oriented uh, group here in, uh, in Dallas. But it was posted on their websites. Links were posted on their websites. And we had listeners uh, tuning in all around the world. And we this had... Was this was a the episode with Christopher Sharp and you know where we talk about homelessness and you know obviously like you said it's gonna it got picked up and you know I kept getting emails and notifications and comments saying that you know the podcast was had exceeded the certain amount of downloads that it gets when you have free airtime on SoundCloud and I'm I'm like I'm thinking over here like man who's downloading all this stuff who who keeps playing this stuff you know it's not I kept refreshing every hour and I'm like man the plays just keep getting bigger I, I thought Juan was playing it over and over and over and over again play, just, count, just play count to go up be like look how many people are listening to this you know we even Christopher Sharp was shocked he texted me and he said Ted I don't know what's happening but the numbers are really exploding right I, it was about seven thousand plays yeah and you know had this you know, had had I had start doing this on YouTube a while back, I think we could have made a better case for it. But you know, you know, we were just starting out. We didn't know what we were doing. We sure. were just going along with the flow. And episode five, we 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 stayed on the same course as far as homelessness goes. Yeah. I I have a class with Ben Benjamin DeSoto who's a local photographer. Uh, he worked for the Houston Chronicle for 22 years. He's retired from the Chronicle, and he's currently finishing his bachelor's here at the University of Houston downtown. And one day we said, hey, why don't we do a podcast together talking about homelessness? That is his kind of passion. He goes out and photographs uh, homeless. And... He's done doc. He's in the process of doing a documentary on homeless youth, which tied in perfectly with our podcast with Christopher Sharp mm. and previ the previous uh, episode. And that that uh, episode got a lot of attention as well. Mm. And these photographs are, you know, they're pristine. They're professional quality photographs. I mean, you're not going to find the no. stuff on Instagram or you know stuff from photoshop i mean this is yeah. high quality stuff and you know props to ben DeSoto for yeah. for his work and his dedication to i want to mention that he was here uh taking pictures for 
dateline for the United Nations uh, representative that we had here in uh, October, I believe. And the, the school's president, uh, Dr. Flores, saw him taking pictures mm -hmm. and came, came up to him and said, hey, what news outlet do you work for? He said, I want to get your pictures. And he said, I work for Dateline Downtown. And that wow. really shocked uh, Dr. Flores. That as we as had, it should have been. <laughs> yeah. That we had attracted that level of talent. I mean, it's amazing. It's, you know, it's really amazing when you come across people like that where, yeah. you know, they've, they're passionate about what they're doing. And to be able to, to incorporate that into, you know, an outlet like Dateline Downtown, as we're doing now, it's just amazing. And we followed up that episode with another, this was our, I guess you would say, second celebrity guest, although he wouldn't, he doesn't like being called a celebrity, you know, and whatnot. But, you know, Adam Scorgi, he's a acclaimed independent filmmaker. You know, he hosts his own podcast called The Scorgi Ex Exchange. And, you know, he, he called his title, as he says, is creative hustler. You know, he has a he's known for doing all these documentaries. You know, the first one that I saw was called the union it's a you can catch that one on netflix about the titled the business behind behind getting high so there's a business behind marijuana obviously and he followed that up with his new documentary titled the culture high that featured you know celebrities like joe rogan snoop dogg richard branson Wiz khalifa the list goes on and on this episode we discussed the decriminalization of marijuana i mean I've, as we've seen in recent years you know marijuana just is starting to become legalized in in around the united states and who knows i mean the time frame that it'll be that it'll be legalized all around the nation but we discuss all that all that you know we discuss politics the politics behind it and just about, you know, you can find anything and everything in between in that episode. You know, it's a really good episode. You know, we, the day we recorded that episode actually was the premiere, the Houston premiere of his new documentary, which I got to catch, which, you know, I highly recommend you guys check out that documentary. You can check it out on iTunes, on Vimeo. It's very, very informative stuff. It's not just about getting high, you know smoking weed and stuff like that you know you're really going to learn learn a lot about unfortunately the day that juan was recording that episode was also the day that the united nations event was going on and walked to vote so we were really busy we were stacked <laughs> yeah here's here's reporters and editors uh our our seventh episode was a candid interview with tara taylor who is uh online senator for UHD, she's a political activist, and she's a former White House intern. And we had a very candid discussion with her uh, about the results of the midterm election. This was right after the midterms, uh, early November, and she was very candid with us about her thoughts and consequences behind the outcomes of the election and what they would mean to UHD students and minorities in particular. Like I said, very inf informative stuff, and that's a that's our main goal here to bring you all this information sure. for you guys. I mean, not not to say that people are misinformed out there, but there's a lot of people that are misinformed and may not know about all these things going on. You know, s some people don't even bother to pay attention to what's going on. And on mainstream media, there's always a bias there's always something behind the news mm -hmm. they focus on you know uh ratings uh commercials mm -hmm. he podcasts are beautiful because they don't have that right uh, behind them they don't have that motivation behind them they're more independent they allow the host to explore whatever topic they want mm -hmm. and I think that that has been a huge addition to our offering of media. 
Right. You know, like like you said on TV, you know, you're always going to find these news channels. They're very, very, very clean, you know, and podcasts. I mean, you can, you know, a cuss word might slip out here and there. But, you know, what's what's the yeah. big deal about that? You know, people people are missing the point. Yeah. But, you know, we follow that. I mean, we got a tremendous amount of response from that, too. We did. And, you know, I like to tell the listeners out there, you know, that, I mean, these people these our guests might not even promote our podcast and you know that's completely fine we're not gonna make them promote it but you know we still get a decent amount of traction on it sure which is really really awesome to to hear we follow that episode i think that's that was our last official episode that was posted on soundcloud and you know in messing with with uh, windows movie maker and stuff like that you know I decided that we make the transition and jump straight to YouTube because it's fairly more easier than SoundCloud and we can have we can start incorporating video in, into the podcast and our first our first podcast that we did with that Isaac went up on Valdez. YouTube was with Isaac Valdez if the former student body president here at UHD from last year last year he is a He's a senior. He's graduating uh, this week, I believe. He is attending medical school, and he's also a dreamer. And for those of you that don't know, that that means he's uh, defer. He's covered under the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals. Um, and we wanted to have a discussion with him about the immigration debate. Now, this interview was conducted right before the president's executive action but it's still very pertinent yeah. uh so i would definitely re- highly recommend that you listen to it there's um, a lot of good information on on that podcast episode yes. isaac highlights the fact that there's a myth that immigrants don't pay taxes and he says that's a lie you know taxes are taken out of his paycheck he is a dependent on his parents, but since they don't have social security numbers, they never get a refund. Mm. So that money just kind of disappears into the system. Mm-hmm. Who knows where it goes? And that was something that I didn't know. And I've been involved with immigration politics for a while as a political science major and an intern for uh, Representative Sheila Jackson Lee. I worked a lot on immigration cases, and I had no idea that that tax money was uh, being withheld by the government. So that was something that was really uh, informative on that podcast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that was our first episode on YouTube. And all, all the previous episodes we had before, the one through seven on SoundCloud, they're going to be going up on YouTube soon. So. You guys should be definitely looking out for that in the, you know, they'll be up there soon. (laughs) As soon as I start working on them. But, I mean, it doesn't take long, but they'll be up there for you guys to listen. And I'll be pulling down the SoundCloud page and we'll be feeding it directly to YouTube. So we follow that episode with a very special, special episode, which was episode, episode, what was it? Episode nine? Nine. Episode nine. Where we, for the first time in the podcast, we had, we had I wouldn't say the entire staff, no. but what was what is left, what was left of the, of the staff, and you know I don't know if you want to go into a lot of specifics of it because we cover that in that episode. Well, I want to mention a little bit. Uh, yeah, I guess a little background this, into into why, why we did that podcast in the first that episode in the first place. This this podcast I think it was was beautiful because it was all positive, um, under given the circumstances. A lot of our writers, I should say, all of our writers and myself and Juan, have yet to receive payment, and you know, obviously, waiting for payment since August has caused some frustration mm-hmm. and some problems in everyone's life. Mm-hmm. And we kind of got all the negative energy out before we started recording. Sure. As soon as we started recording, uh, 
it turned turned into more of a positive discussion about what writing really means to us mm -hmm. and about uh, what Dateline means to to us as producers of it. And I was, I listened to it uh, on my way home, and I was just taken aback at how passionate these writers are about contributing to their school newspaper. I mean, there's obviously a lot of dedication behind all that, knowing that, that you know, we're not getting paid, and we're still, we're still getting it done. We're still putting out stuff, whether it's stuff that's going up online or, you know, primarily the, the podcast, you know, promoting that. And, but it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm surprised as well. You know, I think if, you know, we've had people that flaked on us, obviously, they're just flaked and other people that are holding back because we're not getting paid and that's fine you know i would do i would have done the same thing you know that's completely understandable but you know it's it's an it's an issue that that i'm sure like i've told my pre previous guests that we've had on before it's an issue that shouldn't be an issue in no. the first place and we actually at the time that we're recording this today we actually uh, Ted actually met with the Student Publications Advisory Committee right. that oversees Dateline mm -hmm. Downtown. And we're getting the issue. The issue's been they've been aware of what's going on and yeah. you know some somebody's already been held accountable for and you know this should be getting resolved within the within the week. So the committee was very surprised to learn that we had paid out of pocket for mm -hmm equipment and software <coughs> excuse me and they said that that should never happen um students should never have to pay out of pocket right and we would be reimbursed immediately and uh, this is all going back to to dateline downtown you know we're not just gonna of course we're gonna use what we what we what we should be getting paid for but you know ultimately we're gonna keep investing in dateline downtown as far as print goes as far as the podcast goes obviously and you know just try to make it just try to make it what it never was before you know just try yeah. to get this thing keep the ball rolling as they say this podcast has proved to be a very useful outlet for us at this time because we cannot print right and we can still disseminate information to our audience so it's been very useful for us right and the last episode that went up um as of now there still be there will still be i'd say maybe two to three more episodes to go but the last episode that went up on youtube is the phone the first phone interview for dateline downtown that i had with the guitar player from the band fozzy i'm not sure if you people know out there but fozzy is the band that the wrestler Chris Jericho is in that he fronts and it's a it was it's a very interesting conversation if you guys haven't listened to it yet we talk about music we talk about podcasting we talk about the music business in itself and just a lot of things in between I had the chance to catch these guys how did you land that interview I reached out to to the band through their website you know through many you know how you, when you go on what bands' websites, they'll have like a contact page, and they'll have their publicists and their manager. And I just reached out to anybody that I could find, and their publicist actually got back to me, and said, "Yeah, we can have." Originally, it was going to be an interview with Chris Jericho himself, over the phone, of course. But you know, I was really, I was really excited to to speak to him, and at the last minute. I get the call and it's the guitar player from Fozzie and I'm over here. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say I was disappointed, but it was kind of like a last minute, last minute change. And I just ran with it. I'm like, you know what? It's not Chris Jericho, but I can still make something out of this. And it was a very interesting conversation. We could have gone up to about an hour. I, I wasn't really sure how much time he had. I should, should have probably asked. It was a rookie mistake on my part, but um, I had the chance to catch these guys um, about two weeks later, and I took I took some 
it's not professional video, but I took some video on my phone that I compiled into a little compilation that I'll be putting up on the YouTube page for you guys to check out soon. And just an just a really, really good conversation. Over the I mean, over the phone, you guys I mean, you gotta take into account how I did this. It was just me recording through my laptop and one microphone i'm holding the phone i mean i'm giving away my tricks here but mm. i'm holding the phone right up to the mic mm -hmm. and it sounds like he's calling in through like a professional like a phone wow. or whatever like through the computer through skype but you know that's that's the reality of it and you know i enjoyed doing that episode i believe it came out really good as far as phone interviews go and we'll keep pumping out more of these phone interviews in the near future uh, the same day that we recorded our staff podcast, we had uh, a, for a writer who wants to come back to Dateline downtown as soon as he's paid, uh, stop by, and we started discussing the whole Ferguson situation, and we just on the spot, Juan and I made the decision to turn on the mics right. because the conversation was so good, uh, we wanted to capture it. So that will be going up soon. And, you know, that's, that's the beauty of having this kind of equipment. Mm -hmm. we, can, we can record uh, on the fly. If need be, we, we can take the equipment with us and record. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the university's never had this kind of uh, outlet before. We're the first, first organization on campus to have a streaming podcast. To have the studio quality equipment, so I want to point that out that uh, this is kind of a groundbreaking idea that we've done here. Right, and before we wrap up and mention the list of of guests that we have coming up, that'll be be posted. I mean, by the time this goes out, this will be our recap show. So this is going to be the last episode for 2014 as we move forward to 2015, but. Yeah, that Ferguson podcast that we did was with our staff, our, one of our staff writers, Joel Jackson. So you guys will be catching that. I mean, by the time this goes out, it might be out already. Who knows? That's the beauty of this. You never know when this stuff's going to come out. Yeah. And we might even we might even throw two episodes weekly, one episode weekly. It just depends on how much content we have. You know, and stuff will always get in between. But we try to put it out, put out at least once a week. We have... We also have another interview with a very close personal friend of mine. And I've been friends with this guy for, I'd say, about 10 years now. He's a, he's a realtor for the professional group Realty and founder of his own and host of his own podcast, the Texas Startup Podcast, which I highly recommend you guys check out. A lot of people that come on have podcasts. <laughs> mm -hmm. Really, really cool. He's uh, Randy Canales. You know, we had a really interesting conversation. We talk about, we talk a little about, we don't really get a lot into real estate. You know, there's not much to talk about there. I mean, I mean, there is, but we just, the focus of the conversation wasn't that. It's mainly just about, you know, going, uh, we talk a lot about education. You know, a lot of people that opt out from going to college and I take the route that he took. You know, not a bad decision. You know, he's he's become very, very successful as a realtor, as his own, his own, uh, as his own boss with the podcast, with the whole, I guess you could say he's a, he's an entrepreneur mm. and he takes that approach into doing things, you know, and who knows, maybe down the road, he might, he might end up going to college. I mean, who knows? It's an, it's an idea he's. He's um, he's thought about, you know, but he decided to, I mean, very early on, it didn't even take him that long after he graduated high school. He said, you know what, I'm going to do this and, you know, that's that's what I'm going to do. And he he did it. <laughs> I've known him for for that long to to know that. I mean, obviously, but uh, it's a really good episode. We also discussed the Ferguson case, not so much in detail as as how we covered it with Joel Jackson. But we do talk, I mean, at the time that we rec recorded that, I believe it was the day after the 
the verdict had come out with the grand jury. So it was still pretty fresh. And I offer my opinion on it. And as does he. Really, really interesting episode for you guys to check out. I mean, it'll be going up by the time this comes out. So the episode after that was with another person, another friend of mine that I connected with about a year ago. We never really had the chance to actually sit down and talk or hang out up until that day. And he came down to UHD and I actually got in touch with him. He said, yeah, man, let's do it, man. I'm I'm all for it. And this is actually his first, his first podcast out of the, the ones he's usually on. I mean, he hosts, He's the host, one of the hosts of the Jiu-Jitsu podcast, which is, I mean, if you guys are Jiu-Jitsu nuts out there, highly recommend that for you to check out. He's Robert Izell, personal trainer at the UFC gym in Missouri City. If you guys didn't know, there's a UFC gym out in Missouri City for you guys to check out. And just we just talk about a lot of a lot of things in in detail. We talk about the pod, the jiu-jitsu podcast we talk about fitness we talk a lot about music towards the end we talk about again the ferguson case oh i think we were about a, a week removed from when the verdict was given and just uh, i mean we just stre- we stretched it out we went past the hour and you know it, it was really a real good pleasure to have him on the podcast for the first time for us to know that he it was his first podcast out of the pursuit podcast and the jiu-jitsu podcast it's really really an honor and just a pleasure to have him on and we would like to have him on back in the near future our let's see i'm running down the list here running down the list i believe it should be our last episode that'll be going up for the year is with another we're bringing our friends in to the podcast now (laughs) with another personal good personal friend of mine that I've known since elementary school I can't think of I can't think how how far back I've known her maybe since first or second grade but like I mentioned on that on that episode, it really has been an on and off uh, friendship. You know, we really haven't, we really don't hang out as much. We never hung out as much. We never did talk as much. He, it was just here and there, up until we, we. I found out that she was coming to UHD uh, uh, the same year I was that I enrolled, and we really got to reconnect. And become good friends ever since, you know. And it's uh, it was a real pleasure to have her on on the podcast, Yesenia Aguilar. She's a criminal. She's graduating this year as a criminal justice major. Same deal. That same thing that I'm majoring in. So it's a real, real. I mean, we really had a good conversation about all things UHD and her experience at UHD. As a criminal justice major, you know, the things she's learned here at UHD, the wonderful organizations that she's been a part of. She's She had the chance to be a part of the UHD Professional Society of Criminal Justice Students, which I would highly recommend. She even highly recommended to me to join. You know, I probably should join. But um, she said it's a wonderful opportunity for criminal justice students to be a part of, you know. For by the time they graduate, I mean they have all these all these networks and connections that they can jump off to, and it's just a just a a really interesting conversation. We also touch on the Ferguson case in itself. I know I'm beating the dead horse here, but you know it's a really it's a really important case, and and people have to people have to know the information. People have to be able to make their own, I guess their own, be able to form their own thoughts on it and not just go based off on on what the media says, you know. We are the media, but we're not Fox News, we're not CNN, 
we're not MSNBC. I want to I want to make a comment that uh, most of our the majority of our guests have been UHD either students or alumni, mm-hmm. and we try to mix it up. We recently had a comment on our Facebook page that uh, about someone saying, "What does this have to do with UHD?" Oh yeah, point point that out. That that was the story on yeah on as many people out there know. Um, CM Punk, uh, formerly of, he was a former WWE superstar. He he's currently signed with the with the UFC. You know, it's a multi deal contract. And you know, we I'm not gonna mention who I'm not gonna mention any names here. But this this individual s- posted on our Facebook page asking, you know, what does this what does this have to do with UHD again? Well, I mean. What are, what are we, I mean, this is our job as reporters, as editors, you know, we're supposed to report on, on the news, you and know. And on things that are of interest to young college students. Yeah, and I mean, uh, for, for somebody to sit down here and say, you know, that's not very important. Well, it got a lot of attention over the weekend on Twitter. It made all the sports sites, all the major news sites, much, much less. But, you know, we're not just going to sit here and talk about ferguson all day long you know it's just it's just not i mean we're gonna talk about everything and we can't devote the entire uh airtime to uhd there are things outside of UHD. exactly i mean if we just focus on uhd then you know like like uh i forgot who this was i think i believe it was our managing editor muhammad zane he said you know if you just focus that focus it on uhd then you're just you're gonna be very limited yeah to that narrow audience yeah and you're not gonna you're not gonna grow i mean like we've seen when i posted uh the episode with christopher sharp on my twitter feed i got favorites from los angeles from new york from uh oregon all over the country Mm -hmm. and if we were strictly talking about UHD politics and what's going on at UHD we wouldn't have that kind of audience no you know so we try to bring stories that interest you Mm -hmm. now of course we can't make every story fit every student but we try to uh, mix it up right right and like you said I mean I mean that's that's what our, our our print is for, you know. Our print is entirely devoted to UHD. Yes. And outside information here and there, but you know the podcast, hey, the podcast is our thing, you know. Yeah. As of now, this podcast is run by us because we invested in the mm-hmm. equipment. So we decide what we're going to talk about and I mean of course we're not going to fly off the handle here and you know start uh <laughs> Adding in our opinions about what we think about, you know, cases like Ferguson. I mean, we do add our opinions, but we also want to hear the other side of it. Yeah. You know, like we heard with Joel Jackson, he gave a lot of, you know, good things about to think about that I never, you know, had taken into consideration. Yeah. But, you know, it's, I mean, as of now, it has been our thing. You know, we've gotten, we've gotten, uh, I'm sure had like some i think it was dr sample mentioned to you that he he wants to he uh, he wants to meet with us regarding the podcast and yeah you know hey i'm all for it i'm all for incorporating this podcast as a uhd podcast under under our i mean under our set conditions you know sure if it is of interest to us we i mean that's that's the thing that i've that I've had in the back of my mind since we started the podcast, you know, I really do wish that this becomes a UHD podcast, not yeah. just exclusive to Dateline Downtown. UHD has the power to attract high-powered guests, yeah, celebrities, yeah. stars, Absolutely. stuff like that, mm-hmm. that we may not be able to on our own. Mm-hmm. And they can provide us with more resources to expand, better mics, mm-hmm. uh, video component, things like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, you see that you see it all the time with other podcasts. You know, you look at the Joe Rogan experience, and that's just like a high-end podcast with video, and you know, it goes up live. People yeah. can watch it live as it happens. You know, and we can definitely make the jump 
jump to that as a UHD podcast on iTunes. It's just a matter of, you know, if it, if it, it, I mean, it does interest me, but you know, we just have to hear, hear it from him, you know, what yeah. he, what he has to offer. And, you know, hey, I'm all for it. Like I said. Yeah. Uh, it, it would be great. Uh, once, as we said, once we get reimbursed for this equipment, we plan on investing in more equipment. But if UHD, one of the bones of contention that I have right now is that Dateline Downtown is considered a student organization, but our advisor has not allowed us to be considered as a student organization to get funding under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. So we're going to fight for that. Yeah. We've been fighting for that for a while. Uh, one of our uh, copy editors uh, is the head of the Council of Finance for student organizations. And she has fought really hard to get us funding uh, up to $2,000 that would really help us with microphone uh, extensions, uh, video cameras, stuff like that, that we can expand with. So we, we would love to expand this podcast because right now it's just two guys and two microphones. Mm hmm and you know we're hoping next year that we can bring you uh more elements and it's, it's amazing to see the amount of i mean how much traction we've gotten with the podcast yeah. which is such a limited budget i mean you look at you look at the mics we have now and you know they're not really expensive mics no they're but, not. i mean they're quite pricey but they're not for the quality i mean it's amazing but we're just running this through a little M, M audio M track interface, and that o that only runs two mics. And whenever we have guests on, I mean, we so have I, to share a mic. Yeah, we have to share mics. I have to let them know that you know we're. I'm gonna be sharing a mic with my friend. You know, our guests always have one mic. You know, they're our guests. Mm -hmm. But even when we're sharing mics, it's kind of the audio. It's on and off. But you know, we we're, we're really trying to to make this thing grow and sure. it's it's gonna take time you know like all podcasts do you know you can't just start a podcast and start it investing in all these high-end products and stuff like that you have to you have to go little by little and say hey if this is going somewhere you know maybe we can start investing in more equipment it's amazing the amount of support that we've gotten in the UHD community with Christopher Sharp with Isaac with John Locke uh, and we hope to continue that relationship and hope to continue bringing you uh, UHD news and special guests whenever we can get them. Uh, so it's been a pleasure this semester to have this outlet to experiment with it. Uh, we hope it can continue. And by the time this goes up, we will have made the f full transition and jump to YouTube for the podcast so if you want to if you're wondering where that SoundCloud page went you know yeah. I mean the the site will still be up there Dateline Downtown slash podcast it'll be up there it's just another it's just going to be another form of mm -hmm. another outlet that we're going to be under YouTube so and, and where can they find the podcast they can find a podcast directly at Dateline Downtown dot com slash podcast and if you want to visit the homepage, obviously just datelinedowntown.com. There and you can find. And our print issue is on there as well. You can find our print issue online as well. It's the, under e newspaper, so you can find. I believe there's only two, two editions on there, if I'm not mistaken. But you can find it on there under if you want to read past issues or if you want to read them as they go. But I mean, I I make sure that the website is up and running. You know, very current, up to date promoting our podcasts or print issues so you can also find a facebook page out there and give us a like folks if you like us give us a like on facebook yeah. it's dateline downtown on facebook and if you want to follow us on twitter the handle's at the dateline so all right we don't have much control over our twitter feed so everything that we post on facebook goes directly to our twitter feed so it really redirects you back to the facebook page so <laughs> It, it doesn't hurt to give us a follow on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You can you can retweet our stuff, favorite our stuff, it, whatever you guys want to do. And I think we also have 
uhg.edu slash yes. dateline yes as far as for school purposes yeah. go you know they that's our official site on the, on the school website right and the youtube channel is dateline downtown we don't have a backslash yet on that since we i think it takes some a certain amount of subscribers for you to name your own channel something like that i can't i don't remember what i was reading the other day but give us subscribe guys if you like the if you like the podcast go ahead and subscribe and share it with your friends and family and whoever else you want to share it with you know maybe we can pick up more national national sure. attention from it. one of one of our one of the professors at the meeting i was at this morning mentioned that they thought that we wouldn't get any listeners when we started this podcast and i i said well we far exceeded our own expectations mm-hmm uh, with this semester, yeah. and we expect next semester to to be even better. Mm-hmm. I originally, originally, my idea was just to focus it on UHD, but now that <laughs> now that we've taken this other course, it's really you know we got a kind of a mixture. Yeah, of the yeah, two. it's a mixture. It's a mixture, but I I originally wanted to, to focus specifically on UHD, and you know, looking back, that probably wasn't going to be a very good idea. Yeah. For the university, it might have been, but as we're not far a public relations arm for the university. Right, by the right. Way. So you know, hey, let's just bring on bring on guests. You know, we have. I'm not gonna say we have a long line of list lined up. I could say that just to kind of like pump it up a little bit, <laughs> but we do have a a sporadic amount of guests lined up for for sure. the upcoming year, 2015, and. A lot of our guests come to us spontaneously. Oh, too. yeah. Yeah. And uh, do we have any plans as far as the podcast goes for 2015? Plan is to start off with, uh, we'll probably start off with John Locke again, like we did mm-hmm. last semester, right. and take it from there. Um, I want to get Ivan Sanchez on. That's one of my goals. I have uh, a friend of mine introduced me to ambassador chase onto my who is the former ambassador u.s ambassador to the country of Qatar, and he's a vice president for chevron at the moment and he wants to come on and talk about the impact of falling gas prices and what that means to the average consumer so look out for that uh we'll probably have ben DeSoto back on to talk about his documentary film work uh, I'm sure we'll have immigration activists such as Isaac back, back on. Uh, so stay tuned. Right, and you can probably tell by now that you know we'll have a celebrity every now and then. It's it's very hard to get these <laughs> celebrities on, but you know we Ted and I really make the effort in you know reaching out to these people and and it, you know it's it's not about you know getting celebrities and saying oh look at look at who we have on. It's just about putting out, you know, valuable information, valuable content, and you know, treating our listeners to to a good interview every now and then. You know, it might not be directly related to UHD, but who never know? You never know. You might be able to go catch catch a band or an artist performing in the Houston area, and we might have them on for an interview. So, mm. it's really good to treat our listeners to something really good, as we have with the uh, guitarist rich ward you know that that to me was like a little treat for the dateline downtown podcast listeners so i hope you really guys enjoy that episode and every other episode just check us out and you know we look forward to plowing forward 2015 yeah please stay tuned like us follow us uh subscribe to us on youtube we will be here. We'll be continuing to push out content. Oh, and one one more thing: we will be having, we will be having, our first listener, uh, listener based podcast. So we're gonna put it, be putting all that information out there mm-hmm. in the future on our Facebook page, so you guys can email your questions, email your comments, any feedback, any hate mail that you have, you know, just whatever you want to talk, guys want want us to cover. We'll go ahead and cover that. It'll be our first listener-based podcast. I think it'll be answering questions and stuff like that. So kind of like going over fan mail if we have sure. any. But 
that'll be a first and originally I wanted I wanted to do it this year but obviously for timing and stuff like that we're not going to be able to push it out but it's definitely something to put out there uh, before the year ends so we can get something like that done in 2015. I also want to say that our office phone number is 713-221-8192 and we're, when we're in the office you're welcome to call and ask us questions and we can even discuss them on the podcast if you'd like uh, so feel free to call us right and we we could be yeah we we'll be putting that number out on our facebook page um if i'm not sure how that's gonna work but no i mean it's very it's still important to put it out there if people have questions or any concerns and our emails too Dateline dot editor at yahoo dot com. That's the primary email that where most of the stuff comes through. You guys can email me at dateline underscore assistant dot editor at yahoo dot com. Not a very fancy email, but <laughs> hey, we work with what we have, and yeah, and I'm really, I'm really stoked for next year. Yeah, as am I. If that's the correct word. <laughs> I, I just want to say, uh, hope good luck on finals, everybody. Uh, hope you have a happy holidays, have a safe holidays, and we look forward to seeing you next semester. Uh, until then, go Gators.